I hope my sound is good now. I believe it is. Thank you for letting me know, friends, that my sound was bad. I'm still, unfortunately, still learning some of the fine points of this business. Thanks for bearing with me for this past year. 11 months right now that I've been doing the uh, daily art adventures. I plan to continue. So I called this <laughs> continuing with the devil in the details. <laughs> uh, again, not I, I don't want to harp on this too much, but anybody can can give an, an, a time. Anybody with a modicum of artistic capabilities can copy a thing. And I hope I'm not being overly harsh or with that statement. Um, the challenge is not to draw something. The challenge for me, and I think for the, for the higher level of art, forgive me, if I may call it that, but it's what I was in the last episode. It was I was comparing it to Franz Hals, and and uh, in the in the heritage, if you will, of um, Rembrandt. It's a it's now over four hundred year heritage of good painting. What most people and most artists have considered good painting is what now in our day David LaFell calls abstract realism and I have I have uh, taken that borrowed stolen that term from him as it's the best one I've ever heard to describe what it is that those of us who are painting in the grand old tradition of not hyper-realism paint. The hard part is not, is not rendering or drawing the thing, in this case drawing the car. Drawing a car realistically is easy and I again I go to my website dannelsonart.com and look at the section I have a small section of automotive paintings and uh, the, the parts of each vehicle if not the whole thing are quite realistic in some case hyper realistic you could even say I suppose um, doing hyper realism is not hard it takes time it takes patience don't get me wrong it takes some patience but it is not difficult what is difficult is what I'm trying to do here, <laughs> and not not necessarily succeeding because it, it it's difficult, is to give the impression, not to be confused with impressionism, but give the give the appearance of a vehicle without drawing, if I may use that term, kind of putting it in quotation marks, without drawing the vehicle. Now that means first of all you need to be able to draw the vehicle flat out. That's the, that's barrier or uh, what? Uh, that's marker number one. You have to be able to draw the thing, period. But then the chal the real challenge is, yeah, okay, now draw it without drawing it. Does it I don't know if that makes any sense to you. And I, here I'm speaking. I hope I'm speaking to artists, especially perhaps to young artists. The challenge is to render the object with pleasant marks so that the the mind of the viewer takes over and turns the pleasant marks that's why they have to be pleasant if the marks are not nice interesting beautiful whatever you whatever you want to call it if they're not pleasant marks if they don't look like they were rendered um boy it's hard to describe if they don't, if they don't look like they were rendered <laughs> in a pleasant manner, then the the viewer's mind, instead of turning it into a car, will be irritated, in fact, by the unpleasant marks. And then no no vehicle appears in their brain. 
on the screen of their retinal cortex. No vehicle shows up, just ugly marks. But if, if you can manage to create what I normally call interesting marks, the essence of good painting is making interesting marks. If, if you can manage to create interesting marks, then the viewer's brain will turn those marks into whatever it is you're trying to render. I don't know, I know all of that is a lot of sort of intuitive gobbledygook language. I'm trying to take something that is very intuitive and put it into language. And frankly, and I'm sure part of, the, part of the reason for my passion in communicating this is that I wish someone had explained this to me. Because I think, I think at age 19, 20, 21, I think I was intelligent enough to get it. Uh, but nobody did tell me that um, at, when I was in college. Um, they, they, they spoke of painterly strokes. They spoke, spoke of painterly style. And sure enough, they showed us, some, now not with great conviction, of course, in the, in the mid-70s, no, if I may speak a little too strongly, but get the point across, no uh, beautiful artwork was embraced uh, by the Academy with any real conviction. Uh, that is to say, my professors didn't try really hard to teach us how to paint because they themselves, looking back, they, they were all younger than I am now, and looking back, I now recognize they all themselves were deeply conflicted, in my opinion, as to what good art was and didn't have a, a philosophical foundation uh, from which to paint. So um, they kind of dabbled in teaching us good painting techniques, but it didn't come with any conviction. It, it was just like, yeah, you know, well, if you want to do traditional painting, you know, you know, that's an option. You, know, you should use brush strokes. Yeah, yeah, you should use brush strokes. Meanwhile, let's go back and talk about abstract expressionism. That was sort of the, that was sort of the world in the academy in the mid-70s. And again, I, I, I blame them partly, and I partly don't blame them. <laughs> I mean, if I had been them, would I have done any better? I, to anybody that answers a question like that in the affirmative is an idiot. No, I, you don't know. If you'd have been them, no, you'd have done exactly what they did. So I don't judge them too harshly, but I do judge them somewhat. Most, uh, partly for this, I, anyway, never mind, this is getting in too much of a tirade, isn't it? I was going to say, though, this part I will judge them for, that even though, again, they were somewhat conflicted, um, you know, let me, they were confused, or they were enough influenced by, um, uh, Green, oh, good grief, I just, I'm having a senior moment. They were influenced enough by the critic, the grumpy New York critic, um, Green, Green, Green. <laughs> I'll remember it in a second. Um, that they weren't, they didn't, they weren't sure themselves what good painting was. So um, they didn't try real hard. Okay, I've already said all that. Okay, so there's there's my take on a on a blue car. I'll zoom in just for a second. doesn't look very good on my monitor. I hope it looks better on yours. And I'll come back to you to all, all of your precious comments here in a little while. Let me continue. I'll do the comments at the end. Uh, so there I am trying to do cars. Now, I actually did the same thing when I did this car. Let me show you a... I don't know if it's a trick. Before I do that, let me. I'm going to add a little bit more red to the taillights. Just now, the, the taillights in this car are not supposed to be on, so... I don't want them very bright, but I feel like just a tiny bit more red is is okay. Okay, now, in my opinion, I have just rendered that car a little too hmm, punctiliously. <laughs> a 
a little too carefully, a little too accurately, a little bit too much time and attention and detail. But I'm glad it, it's accurate enough, I believe. But I'm going to take this brush right here. I'm going to do at least that. And that. Okay? Yep. Now, you probably can. The main... One of the main things that happened, I took that red of the tail light and smeared it all the way out there. In fact, I'm going to diminish that a little bit. There we go. Um, one of the tricks I want to show you is that by doing what I just did, by smearing a moderately carefully drawn object, the, the accuracy is still there. I'm coming back with some clean highlights, by the way, so it's to, to undirty it just a little bit. Um, but the accuracy is still there, and yet I, the accuracy resides, rests uh, in abstraction. That, that is to say, it, it, is, it is engulfed or uh, contained in a higher degree of abstraction. Boy, again, I'm struggling for words here. But I feel like the, I haven't, the, the accuracy that I achieved by careful drawing can still be seen. I've just messed it up. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I just messed it up. Uh, and it works better because now it doesn't look quite, doesn't look quite uh, overdone. I do that, as you saw, I just did that with a chip brush, one of my fa other favorite tools for doing that. I'm going to do this right here. Well, I, I, no, hang on. I was, one of my other favorite tools is a uh, fan brush. But another favorite tool, which I decided to go, is the handle of a chip brush. These lines right here are a little, there, little. Now, it, it, you've seen me do a couple movements now, three to be exact, and you've noticed that they're all done fast. They're all done quickly with energy. That is very important. You cannot come in here to do this. You can't come in here and go, see the tongue? <laughs> Oh my goodness, if you do that, oh my goodness, it will just be a disaster. Because it'll look like you did that. So it has to be with energy. Um, I, I like the effect. I, can you see it on this other vehicle? I very much like. So you see how I painted that car and, and, then, um, and then I smeared it all. And I'm very happy with the way, the effect that it had on that car. Okay, that's probably a good place for me to stop here. Let me turn the camera around and talk to you directly and address the comments. Can I do that? Yeah, there we go. Thank you. Hi, Nelly. Thanks for saying hi. Good words, Dan. Thank you, Toby. Welcome back again. Good to hear from you. Um, I draw water from a well-known house I've painted. <laughs> Whenever I draw water. <laughs> Where do you draw blood? <laughs> Irish guy. <laughs> That's good. Hi, Joanne. Good to hear from you. Awesome tips. Hey, painterly brushes. Thank you. A fellow artist, I presume. Appreciate it very much. Uh, no matter how you slice it, poor kind professors require rendering. <laughs> Is that a word I don't know, Irish guy? It's like a poor, poor scene, poor sign. Wow, I usually know words. Require rendering. <laughs> uh, I was in the middle of learning. Uh, thank you. Uh, uh, Aisha, welcome back. Are you, in, are you from India, by the way, Aisha? I'm probably not saying your name right. Thank you. I, you spoke the other day, and I appreciate that. I was in the middle of learning how to draw a dragonfly, but when I saw you alive, of course, I stopped since I wanted to catch you. <laughs> Thank you. You're sweet. I appreciate it. I hope it helped. Um, I love your way of painting. Thank you, Aisha. I love the way you've been holding your brush. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for noticing. Um, um, let me, a quick comment. Um, Pretty much the only time I ever hold a brush like this, most of the time, is when I'm doing my signature. That's the only time I hold my brush that way. And I recommend, recommend that for most of you. Porky. <laughs> Thank you, Irish guy. Are you from Ireland, Irish guy? Or are you just uh, an American with Irish roots like me? Anyway, thanks guys for watching. I'm going to keep painting for a little while, and I will be back in uh, this afternoon a little bit. And, uh, oh, you're from Yemen. Aisha, thank you so much. Hi. 
and, and the way you're pronouncing my name. Give it a good sound. Yes, indeed. Aisha. Yemen. Close enough. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Delightful to talk to you. And I'm glad I finally figured this out, for goodness sake. That I, could, I thought I was losing all your comments for months and months and months. And then I found out if I touch my screen, you come back up. So it makes it a lot more fun. And now and I've also learned to turn around so you can see my face when I'm talking to you. I'm slow. I'm really slow. <laughs> But I'm getting there. <laughs> Thanks. And if you haven't, uh, I guess you already, are you guess I, all you guys already hit subscribe. So I won't tell you that. Tell your friends to subscribe. <laughs> now he's gone into salesmanship. Okay. Thanks for watching. Bye.